The last set of alkene reactions that we're going to discuss are deal with converting alkenes into carbonyls and then later on we're going to discuss how to convert alkenes into alkanes and to uh, cyclopropanes. And if you have questions about that you can go back to the previous video and look at the list of reactions. All right. So one way to convert alkenes into carbonyls is through a process called ozonolysis. Again, this is a two-step process. So this reaction is going. This first reaction is going to give me some intermediate that the second reaction is then going to convert into my final product. And so, if you look at the alkene, you can see that in the product, both carbons in the double bond, this carbon as well as this carbon, get oxidized up to carbonyls. All right. If you think about it in terms like a, a I know when I was a kid. I used to break sticks over my knee. You think about this double bond the same way. It's just like breaking a stick over your knee and taking each carbon, basically that's in a double bond, and writing it as a carbonyl. All right, so C double bond O here, and then C double bond O here. So let's look at the reaction and let's see how it works. All right, first ozone comes in, and then it reacts with the double bond this way this oxygen attacks this carbon and then the double bond is attacking this oxygen and these, this pair of electrons gets moved here. That gives me a malozonide intermediate which is here. This is very unstable and doesn't stay this way and it breaks down and when it when it breaks down through this pathway you can see this this bond is coming here to give me a pi bond here and then uh, this oxygen is going to donate a pair of electrons to put a pi bond here and then this OO bond breaks here so let's see what we get these are two fragments and then these fragments are going to react with one another this oxygen is going to attack here this oxygen is going to attack here and these this pi bond here is going to get pushed here to form a new cyclic uh, intermediate so let's look at the arrows all right, so here, here, and then here, and then here, okay, and then once this happens, we get a new con a new frag a new cyclic intermediate here after this recombination, right? And I have these little green lines here just to show that this is where your pi bond is going to be, and this is where your pi bond is going to be here. So this cyclic intermediate is what breaks down to give me my two carbonyl so let's look at the arrows I add zinc this is all homolytic cleavage where one electron comes here uh, one electron comes here one electron comes here that puts the pi bond here and then one electron from here goes here one electron from here goes here so that puts the pi bond here and then you you have uh, an oxygen radical that leaves and combines with zinc so let's look at what the products are here's one carbonyl Here's the other carbonyl, and then here's zinc oxide as the product. All right, another way to indirectly convert uh, alkenes into carbonyls is using uh, osmolation, which we talked about in a, in a previous video, where OSO4 and then sodium hydrogen sulfide is added to the double bond to give you a syn diol. Remember, uh, anytime you do this reaction, both diols come on, uh, on the same side. If I take that diol and if I react it with periodic acid or if I react it with sodium periodate, both of these diols get oxidized up to carbonyls. Right? In this case, they will both get oxidized up to ketones uh, because this carbon will become a, a C double bond O, this carbon becomes a C double bond O, and so they both get oxidized up to ketones and the carbon carbon bond here that's between this carbon and this carbon gets broken all right so this is one way to convert in to indirectly convert alkenes into carbonyls is to first do a, a osmolation to give you the diol and then take that diol and oxidize it up either using periodic acid or sodium periodate all right so let's last two reactions and then 
uh, it'll be time to do work. All right, so uh, we're going to talk about how to make alkenes into cyclopropanes as well as how to make alkenes into alkanes. All right, so this reaction is what we call a Simmons Smith reaction. We have an alkene, we have diiodomethane in the presence of zinc metal, and the solvent <coughs> is ether. Right, so the product from this reaction is what we is a cyclopropane, right? That's just this three membered ring right here. All right, so here's my double bond, here's my diodo uh, methane, and then this eventually becomes what we call a carbene, which I'll show you in a minute. So the cyclopropane is the three membered ring here. So this CH2 right here, CHH is this CH2 right here. So let's look at how it happens and it might make more sense. So I take the di my diiodomethane and react it with zinc. Zinc comes in. All right. I have a uh, little zinc complex here. Now watch what happens with the arrows. This is all homolytic, right? One electron comes here onto carbon. One goes here between zinc and iodine, right? And then one electron from this bond comes here to carbon the other one other electron goes here between zinc and iodine so in the product what I get is this carbon species where now carbon has a lone pair right and then zinc iodide all right so this is what we call a carbene right anytime you see diiodomethane in the presence of zinc you get what's called a carbene all right, so a carbene is neutral. It's a carbon with six valence electrons, but it's neutral. Okay, and so uh, the carbene can exist in two forms. It can be a singlet carbene, where both electrons are in one p orbital, or it can be a triplet carbene, where you have one electron in each p orbital. So these two electrons can either stay together as a singlet, or they can go one into one p orbital and one into another as a triplet. All right. So let's look at what happens. So here, here's my carbene that I made. Notice it's a very simple mechanism, right? This pair of electrons come he comes here. The double bond attacks the empty orbital here, and then I get a bond between this carbon and this carbon, and then this carbon and here. And in the end, my product is what we call a cyclopropane. The last reaction that we're going to look at is conversion into alkenes. Very simple reaction. We have uh, a double bond, any type of double bond, in the presence of hydrogen gas, and we need a catalyst. So in this case, the catalyst is either going to be palladium on carbon or platinum oxide. All right, Palladium on carbon is just palladium metal attached to a carbon solid support. So when you hear me say palladium on carbon, it's really palladium on carbon. All right, so when I take the palladium and I add hydrogen gas to it, I add uh, hot two hydrogens to every palladium atom that's on this solid support. And then my alkene can come in and coordinate and then both of these hydrogens get transferred to the alkene through a mechanism that's beyond the scope of the class, but if you have a question about it, I'll be happy to show it to you. All right. So the bottom line is when I have an al a double bond and in the presence of H2 and then I react that in the presence of a catalyst, either palladium on carbon or platinum oxide. Both of these hydrogens get added to this double bond, and that double bond gets converted from an alkene into an alkane. As always, if you have any questions, you can tweet, you can email, or you can drop by my office. Peace.